You're listening to Afton Law, broadcasting from the beautiful South Birmingham. Except no sandwich. Welcome, 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 dear listeners. Welcome to a good Friday afternoon, Den. Grey afternoon, bows to sunshine. You're welcome to Acton Millwall. My name is Nick Hart, number one Millwall podcast from Winnipeg to, uh, to Woolwich, from Wandsworth to Wellington in New Zealand. Number one Millwall podcast broadcasting to you for this crucial championship Good Friday afternoon fixture. One o'clock kickoff, a bit of an unearthly start, dear listeners. We're just waiting for the two teams to come into the, the arena. Apparently, it's a sold out den, um, plenty of blue seats knocking around the place including up here in Birdship Corner, which is living up to its name and reputation. Bill in their familiar dark blue and white, of course, and um, West Bromwich have been let out by ex-line Jed Wallace in a, a fetching lime green ensemble. Your Mill side this afternoon, dear listeners, in goal, Marty Asarkic across the back line, Joe Bryan, Jake Cooper, Jeff Tanganga and Ryan Leonard. In front of them, to some debate online, I, I have to add, Billy Mitchell and uh, Joel Savile, in front of Billy Mitch and George, we've got Watmore returning for Brook Norton Coffee, again to some debate, I shall we say. Zian Fleming, George Honeyman up front, Michael Ola Femi, um, as I saw posted on our uh, WhatsApp group by Graham, is a go to uh, Neil Harris, 11th, Casper the on the bench, alongside Bart Bielkowski, Danny Mack, Murray Wallace, Sean Hutchinson, Ryan Longman, Adam Mayor, Casper the and Romain Essay. Yeah, a sold out then, a, a broadcast on the Club's uh, Twitter feed. There are quite a few empty seats. I'm going to say it's uh, tickets sold rather than bums on seats, dear listeners. Bromwich Airmen, of course. Playoff contenders. Millwall wanting a win. Where does safety lie, listeners? We want to win. Whether we get it today or not, I don't know. A point probably won't be a bad result against the high flying Albion. Um, where does safety lie? 50 points has been the consensus view on all season, really, isn't it? Um, we're on 43 points our win today will take us ever closer to championship safety I personally think the high 40s will do it depending on other results Natch but a win today will be a wonderful wonderful result we just really want to avoid defeat if we possibly can but they're a decent side of course today has been Dockers Day there's a nice introduction of former players and one or two fans long standing on the pitch by Chris Bethel earlier on always a a nice day, annual event now, Dockers Day. Great to see some of the old names and faces from the 71-72 side. Not many of them left now. Brian King was here, a stalwart. Terry Brisley, from that, uh, well, he just passed that era. But uh, great to hear some old names and see one or two of the old faces down there, listeners. Could be Millwall to kick us off. Attacking the away end, as per the teachings and dictums of the Venerable Bede, writing his little bit in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. And big thank you to someone on YouTube who corrected me and said that the, uh, the Venerable B didn't write the, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. But yeah, he certainly did his little bit. Others wrote it as well. But uh, this is probably not the place or time to get too hung up on theological debates of that kind. West Brom doing the knee just to um, get things going. Away we go finally, dear listeners. It's been a long while since I was at the den, dear listeners. You get a bit rusty on it all. Jed Wallace, early possession there, reported by Jake Cooper that he's expecting Jed to be calmer than he was last time. He lost his, lost his plot last time he came here at West Brom, didn't he? Over-celebrated a goal and finished up being a 2-1 win for the Lions. One of Gary Rowett's better results, actually. This is early possession for West Brom over in front of the middle goal. This is the 11 on the right-hand side, trying to jink in. And he'll bring away. It's the ball falls, Oberfemi now. This is Zian Fleck. No, Oberfemi keeps it. Why? George Honeyman now, just outside the West Brom penalty area, balled into the box. Five heads it up into the area, and uh, the goalkeeper takes. Early move forward from Mill, just short of five minutes, four minutes maybe. Brian leaves his foot in on the uh, referee, telling him to calm it. He's shown him a yellow actually on the 11 there. Ground has filled up somewhat now. Still a few empty seats knocking around, but it's not. Um, it's not as uh, sparse as it was looking a few minutes ago. Sarkic's just sliced that clearance like I sliced my golf ball at the driving range yesterday, dear listeners. Anyway, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Good Friday. Hope you've got your Easter eggs at home. Nice work there by Ryan Leonard cutting out a crossfield pass. Over on the left side, we are seven minutes into the game. Early signs already. Millwall have come here to um, crunch their tackles and um, kick, scratch and bollock, as I thought Tony put it so accurately on one of our 
post-matches recently. And West Brom see themselves as latter-day heirs to Barcelona. Well, and then to take a free kick. Set pieces have been our you know, bread and butter. A chance to punt it forward here for Ryan Leonard. It comes as Jake making a run. He gets his head to it. It falls to George Hunnam inside the box. What can George do? Cross. Oh, and ball! Hit his hands. Gone off for a corner. Right-sided corner. Referee unmoved. Me alongside the rest of a very neutral den. Saw that as a penalty, listeners. It's fired in at pace. He might have said he couldn't do anything to get out of the way of it. I don't know, but controversial stuff. Right-sided corner there, listeners. Eight minutes. Curled in from the right. Deep, deep, deep. That's headed over the bar. It's going to be a left-sided corner. Bit of mill pressure, dear listeners. I want to see that again, but I won't see it again because they won't show it on the screen. I can't well, probably see the screen, even if they did show it, listeners. Jill Savile to take down below us in Birdship Corner. Group on stands. Lumped into the middle, goalkeeper comes, he gets it, bats it off the, the head of Jeff Tanganga, who left his calling card on him. He's down, clutching his head like he's been shot, listeners. Ten minutes. I've seen enough, says Neil Harris, confident his mill team have the quality to hold their nerve in the relegation fight. Speaking to the Southern News, Neil Harris says he knows, seen enough in this squad to see him through this um, tumultuous last eight games of the season. There was a wanker in the green, apparently. This says I can't see him, though, as I've said already. This is Watmore now coming down the left side. He's controlling him down there. That's nicely followed in Joe Bryan. Great tackle, Joel Savile. It's been a robust start to the game by Mill so far. We're coming towards 14, going towards 15 minutes. West Brom would love to play their football, but Mill at the moment not giving them a chance to settle down, which is entirely the kind of um, approach that you'd expect and, and I personally approve of. Pitch is looking in fine fettle, listeners. End of a long season. Just a couple, of it, two more home games after this. It's in looking in you know, pretty good order out there. Hats off to the groundsmen that look after the pitch. I do remember when we first came to the new den, as it still is to me. Pitch was um, a bit worn, rough. A bit like Chinbrook Meadows on a bad day. Anyone who knows Chinbrook Meadows. Oh, great move there, Zian Fleming. Bursting through the middle, he's been clipped. Free kick given. It's got to be a yellow card, he's outside the box. The uh, 35 clipped Zian Fleming. No, it's the 17. Great run there, potential run through the middle from Zian. He surged on into the box, but the actual offence was just on the, uh, the edge of the penalty area. Great defensive work, Joe Bryan now. Goes down his man. Comes away with a ball. Nice work. A ripple of applause, as you can hear, dear listeners. Nice work, Joel Savile. More ripples of more applause. Millwall looking to keep the tempo up high and kick, scratch and bollock. I do love that expression. I'm going to use it a lot more often in my everyday speech. All over the top. It throws it away. He throws it. He says, Duncan Watmore on goal. What can he do? One new Millwall! Duncan Watmore! Beautiful finish! Ball Freddy through the middle, one more through on goal, keeps his head, punts it into the goal, one nil mill wall! Nice finish! A lot of people criticising the choice of Duncan Wobble, I suppose that's going to be Neil Harris's answer, dear listeners, all you ex critics out there. Nice move. Ball seemed to come off the um, defender somehow, I'd have to see it again. There's a really nice finish, just showing, I can just see half the screen, a little bit like Albert Steptoe in that famous episode of Steptoe and Son, where they divided the house down the middle. But nice finish, 1-0 Millwall. 21 minutes, halfway through the first half, just reward. I think we've been the more robust side, I know that um, we've drawn a couple of yellows, I believe, so far, but um, we forced our way in front. West Brom trying to play their football, but we're not letting them, that's, that's the way it's going to have to continue. Super Neil Harris, listeners. It would be a big result if we can pull this off. Long way to go yet, though, dear listeners, before I taunt the gods of football who sit in their Olympus playing chess with the lives of ordinary football supporters like me and you. I hate the phrase we've got our mill wall back, but it's, um, it does capture something that had gone missing. And that Neil Harris, whatever he's perceived limitations as a, as, a, as a coach have been in the past he taps into 
myself, I find it refreshing. You, you, you want to come to Millwall and it feel like Millwall. And that's, that's really what he's, he's tapped into so far. Duncan Watmore coming into space. Goalkeeper comes out of pace and clears it. It looks like Watmore might have taken a knock there. Applause. Chase that one in hard. No long ball forward for Robert Femi to chase on to his through. Oh, punts it straight into the arms of the goalkeeper. Big chance there, listeners. Robert Femi had beaten his last man. Should have done better, in truth. 28 minutes. New on a break. It's Ian Fleming Central. Feeds George Honeyman running hard on that right channel there. Overlapping is Ryan Nanad. Pulled into the box, is over hit. That's trying to find what more at the far post there. It's just over, overcooked it slightly on the left side now. This is Ian. 32 minutes, pulled into the box. Headed clear. The referee's letting a bit go, dear listeners, on both sides. West Brom have looked a little bit rattled by the, the whole um, Millwall experience so far, listeners. Which should be pleasing to hear wherever you're listening to this show, all around the globe. Oh, a little ball um, through. There's Duncan Watmore again. Tries to find first George Honeyman. Puts it wide, unfortunately, under pressure. There was some appeal for a penalty. I think that would have been a strong, pen, uh, loose decision by the referee if he'd given that. Nice move, though. Watmore combining with Honeyman there. Some rules, 35 minutes. We're all doing well so far, disrupting the pattern of play of West Brom. They want to pass it around, which really pressing them, forcing the errors out of team, the, the team that aren't used to making errors, it seems. They don't look happy. Brom coming down the right side. It's a ball into the near post. That's collected easily, very easily, by Mateo Sarkic. Played for Montenegro in a week, dear listeners, during the international break. I think I saw they won 2-0. I know it was someone like um, some of the Balkan nation, Bosnia, Herzegovina. I could be wrong. Google check that, listeners. Google check that. Great tackle. Monster performance so far by George Honeyman. Ball in. This is uh, what more? Joe Bryan. Floats it into the box. Push on Zian Fleming. Nothing given by the referee. The slag. 37 minutes. That was a clear push. Beautiful sunshiny day out there, listeners. Clouds moving. Blue sky in the wind. Half the den in shadow, half in brilliant sunshine at the moment. Really, really strong performance so far by George Honeyman, listeners. High energy in that midfield role. Forcing West Brom backwards to the derision of the den. West Brom's passing has gone to pieces in the last few minutes. That'd be something they'll look to address in the half-time break. Clearly the mill taxis have rattled them and um, we fought, scratched and bit hard. And uh, they've not been really been able to respond to it. The couple of corners have been the only real pressure that West Brom have mounted in the whole game so far. Lions leading by that excellent finish from Duncan Watmore. A couple of shouts of penalties that maybe on another day might have gone our way. So um, it's been a really good half by Millwall. There's a half-time break, and you hear the applause. Mill will lead it 1-0 over West Brom. Achtung, Millwall. Just perusing a few comments from Twitter at half-time, listeners, as we wait for the two teams to come back. West Brom already out. Mill will yet to take the, the field. Um, Ashstone Ireland Story, which is a great name, says, was reading the comments when the team went up on Twitter earlier on. Every single one was a variation of a disgraceful lineup, and Harris is a cunt. And yet here we are again beating a playoff contending team because the workhorses are playing ahead of the talent. Um, yeah, I mean, I read the same things. Um, that was a really, really strong, hard-working performance. As you can hear, Milwaukee coming out now for the second half. Um, yeah, just shows us how you can't trust people's opinions. Um, block 10, CBO says we need a second goal. That's a reply to me. Steve Evans says we shame we couldn't add to it, but a superb half of football. Game plan working to the letter thus far, says Steve. And um, Richard Corley says, Mills pressing has been very good so far. Contributed to West Brom struggling to get any control of the game for the first 30 minutes. So it's going to be West Brom to kick us off in the second half. And away we go. Jed kicks us off. Mill attacking the cold blow, of course, as per the teachings of the Venerable Bede. Way back then in Jarrow Monastery. Took great interest in the doings of Mill FC. 1500 years in the future. Old Beady, someone made the point on, online about um, I think it was Joe Chats, Chicago Joe, made the point that West Brom can't play as badly in the second half as they did in the first half. I think we closed them down very, very well, Joe. So, yeah, a bit of both, really. If you uh, be closed down, you're not playing to your full potential. But um, 
huge 45 minutes ahead for Millwall. This would be a massive win if we can keep ahead. Trip to Rotherham on Monday, of course, which rightly or wrongly, I think we've got to expect to be going there and picking up three points. However, you know, inflated an ego that might uh, give you the impression of, the listeners, but that's got to be on our, our agenda, given their poor perf uh, performance this season. So a win here today, if we can pull this off, will be a massive step up the ladder to championship safety. So um, hard work is the key of the first half. Hard work's going to be the key of the second half. Here comes West Brom, though. That's going to go for a goal kick. 47 minutes. I name-checked George Honeyman as my first half man of the match, and that's not the man of the match, listeners. Of course, he only had 45 minutes. And um, I think it was Block 10 CBL pulled me up asking what... What Ryan Leonard has, uh, what George Honeyman done that Ryan Leonard hadn't. And I only had um, however many characters to play with Block 10 on, on my post. And you really could have named a lot of that side in the first half, having really good performances. But yeah, Ryan Leonard done very, very well, mate. I'm, I'm not disrespecting Ryan Leonard by any stretch of the imagination. I just thought George Honeyman done, done well for us, pressing forwards. That's, uh, I'd say the same about some of the Jules Jill Savile's tackling. Billy Mitch has done well. There's been a few out there, mate, but we've got to continue that, of course, the second half. So enough with the self-justifications. Ball forwards, over is chasing it down. It's going to go loose. This is Zian Fleming. Shot. Oh, wow. Point after touchdown for Zian Fleming. <laughs> Moments opportunity open up from distance. It needed to be on target. It wasn't on target, listeners. It was high over the bar. Embarrassing, I heard someone shout out. It was it was wayward. 49 minutes. 23 puts it into the middle. It's a flick header at the near post wide, thankfully. It had a bit of power on it, but it was well wide. That was the two. All over the top. This is through to Obafemi's offside. Overside. Just looking at a story online that Neil Harris feels that Obafemi's got another 5 or 10% left in him. Improvement. That ball was a little flick over the top there. He was through on goal, but unfortunately deemed offside there. I like him. He's, he's been a, a strong player for us this afternoon. Collecting the ball and holding his man off. Strong, strong player. Incidentally, listeners, I want to take a break from the football, if I may, just to pay tribute to the recently uh, deceased Steve Harley, one of my favourite artists as a kid. I was a huge fan of Cockney Rebel back in the uh, mid-70s. I had their albums, Human Menagerie, Psychomodo, best years of our lives, great, great run of albums. And um, he was a local boy, Steve, Steve Harley. He's um, apparently used to go to Cold Blow Lane back in the old days. And um, terrific artist. Uh, that, that run of early 70s albums for me is, um, remains a favourite. I was playing it in the car coming over today. So we're on RIP, Steve Harley. Lovely take, lovely take by Zian Fleming. He's pulled down there, it's got to be a free kick. No, he keeps possession well there. And beats his man. Beautiful work there by Zian Fleming. That's what we want to see. You can hear people standing up in anticipation. Ball's just got away from Oberfemi as it was fired in from Zian. Billy Mitch dispossessed, unfortunately, in midfield there. Giving the ball back to West Brom. Lovely, lovely bit of skill and strength combining there with Zian Fleming, dear listeners. 55 minutes. Ball over the top. This is Oberfemi feeding um, Watmore. Back to Oberfemi on the right side. What can he do here? Just got away from him, unfortunately. A little moment there where he's uh, looking to shoot, but unfortunately the ball just escaped him. Ball breaks, this is Oberfemi, he finds... Oh, put over the bars! Was that Zian? Big opportunity there. No, it was what more. Big opportunity there. Ball broke loose on the edge of the penalty area, put over the bar. Should have hit the target, dear listeners. 57 minutes. It's a fully committed game of football. It's always an enjoyable game of football. Full on. Line still leading by that goal from Duncan Watmore. What are we coming towards now? We're coming towards 58, 59 minutes. But West Brom have come out of their shed a little bit more in this second half. They're having more possession in their half. Nicely cut out there by Jake Cooper, who launches it. Exocet missile down the, down the line. One for all you Falklands War historians. Got Oberfemi overlapping him on the left side. Gets an elbow in the face. Gets a yellow car for that. It's a free kick. The referee seeing that as a body check. I'm a long way away from it. This might not have been the elbow in the face. Might have been a body check. Anyway, free kick on the corner. 
left side corner of the penalty area. Comes all 60 minutes. Opportunity here for the Lions. Zian takes into the uh, mass of players, unfortunately. Good pressure here from Mirror listeners. I might go all misty eyed and start waxing lyrical about the old days. Here. There's a, there's a, I know that um, Harris has his critics, as we've said a few times. Wallace has been substituted. He's made no impact so far on the game. Comes 21 and 19. Interesting table. I think it was second tier podcast listeners published um, a list of a contrasting list of attendances in the championship, contrasting the 2012 13 season with the 23 24 season. Um, top uh, attended side in 2012 13 in the championship was Brighton Hove Albion with 26,000. Behind them, Sheffield Wednesday with 24,000 and Derby County 23. And so it goes down the list. This season, 23 24, the top attended side, well, last season, I should, uh, no, it's this season, I'm talking about this season, 23 24. So far, then it's Sunderland with 41,000, and then followed by Leeds, 35,000. Average attendance is Leicester, 31,000. Our own dear Millwall are uh, in 20. First position of the um, of the table with 16,000. That's a pretty good average attendance. Dear yeah, listeners, contrast that with 2012-13 when we were also down near the bottom and only Barnsley was below us. But that was 10,000, 10,500 back then. You know, as much as I call it the group on stand and take the piss out of it all, when you look at the average attendances over the last uh, 10 years. You know, 11,000, 10,000, 2014, 15. I know that was a bad season. 13,000, 2017, 18. And now we're averaging 16,500. This is apparently is a sellout today. All tickets sold anyway. So quite a contrast. Quite a contrast generally. I mean, there is... Uh, some of us older gits go on about, you know, the, the plastic nature of the modern game. But... Um, the bums are on seats, the TV deals are rolling in, and um, as much as the likes of you and I might bemoan some aspects of the game, such as the, uh, the mess that the FA made of the St George's Cross on the England shirt, e.g., but all but one, and, and the whole kind of um, corporatisation, Americanisation of the game, you can't argue with those attendances. It's a business at the end of the day. Anyway, this is West Brom breaking forwards whilst I go into rant mode. It's a penalty. Oh no! Joe Bryan catches the winger over on the right side out of nothing. That's a penalty for West Brom. Looked like a very soft tackle on him. The referee immediately blows up for a penalty. Here we go. One all. Bottom left hand corner. Soft penalty. So a soft penalty to concede, I should add. Ball over the top, this is the th uh, third, uh, three, 31 rather, on the left side. Shot straight at Sarkic, who takes it straightforwardly enough. Watmore collects, nice work, well done Watmore on the left side. Surges into the area, it goes flying, no penalty says the referee. I didn't think that was a penalty, if I'm going to be honest with you listeners. That's why you tune into this show, for my um, fair and unbiased judge-like opinion. I didn't think it was. He made the most of it, put it that way. Anyway, this is West Brom coming forwards now. Great tackle, Jill Savile. Great tackle. 70 minutes. You've worked really, really hard. There's a bit of a body blow to have gone to one each for that equalising penalty. But um, as ever, finishing has been um, an area of, of uh, where we've fallen a little bit short across the whole season. But I can't fault the amount of effort and hard work and the, and the tactical approach today because... This is a decent West Brom side, and we've really reduced them to um, being very grateful for that penalty. So, 20 minutes to go. Game's in the balance. Mill substitution. Ryan Longman's coming in. Who's this coming out? This is going to be Jules Honeyman coming out. Worked really hard. It was just a little wayward moment a few minutes ago, but um, I think he's done a really strong performance. He's getting good applause around the den. Stronger first half, so it was high energy first half. Second half, perhaps not so much, but anyway. Good performance, Jules Honeyman. In comes Ryan Longman. Flags fluttering proudly in the breeze. The middle Millwall flag on the docker stand looks like it's come loose in the high winds last night. It's hanging, hanging limp, as they might, as you might say. The other two, the St George's Cross and the and the Union flag, are proud in the breeze, but the Millwall flag is looking a little bit um, bedraggled. I love people having kind of um, sign language conversations with the away end as a chap 
over to my right making one all signs to someone in the crowd over in the West Bromwich Albion section. I, I find that whole conversational aspect. I mean, obviously, it's fairly um, most of it's abuse, isn't it, based think, on the gesticulations. But um, parks back to an age of simpler age of semaphore, doesn't it? And flags at sea, that kind of thing. You know, maybe we should bring the flags along, Blue Peter flag and all the other ones. You know, to convey mess. England expects that kind of thing by flag. So like an injury substitution. Looks like um, Joe Bryan is coming out of the game. It's going to be Danny Mack coming in. Yep, Danny playing out of position again in that left left side as he has done. He's done quite well, really. Ten minutes to go. We're on about 87 minutes. Jill Savile, um, the official man of the match. Won't argue with that. I think Ryan Leonard has got a good shout. Obviously, Honeyman's probably gone from the fray a little bit early for that, that accolade now. Probably would have gone with Ryan Leonard in, the, in Honeyman's absence, but I won't fight whoever's chosen Jill Savile this afternoon. Right side of corner, West Brom, anyway. Casper Denor's come in. What more's come out? Someone makes the point he should have come in half an hour ago, which is uh, a fair point. Brooke Norton Cuff has come in as well. Billy Mitch and Duncan Watmore have come out. That's who listeners, they're just walking around the pitch below us. And the point is um, not a bad outcome. I we'll probably would have settled for that at the start of the day, but having got in front, it feels like um, points lost at the moment anyway. It's um, been a strong performance by Mill. We probably feel that we should have got more out of the game, which is um, given where we were. I suppose that's always going to be the comparison, given where we were. It's a really good outcome. I probably would have settled for one all at the start of the afternoon. What about you, listeners? Would you have settled for one each? But having got in front and having had opportunities, and especially in that first half, with less so in the second, um, there's a slight sense of um, the fizz has gone from our Coca Cola in the second half but um, West Brom certainly couldn't have done much worse than they did in that first half and they've done better they've, they've looked more coherent and certainly since the substitutions have been made they've looked more um, they press forwards have more of the ball at our end of the, game, end of the half anyway still about a minute to go so I won't tempt Lady Fate uh, whistling for the final whistle there it is one all um Good point. Let's be honest, this is a decent side. This was a playoff contending side. Ron then has gone down feeling the same as I do, that that's points lost. But um, start of today's game, a one-all draw would have been a bad outcome. So um, fair play to, to both sides. That was a fully committed, full-on English championship level performance. Um, Millwall man of the match. I'm going to go with Ryan Leonard. I think that was a good, strong performance overall. Um, Jules Honeyman, I mentioned at half time. That's a very valuable point. Um, we'll have a look at the league table in due course, dear listeners. So, for now, from the den, as the sun beams across the far side of the pitch, the flags fluttering in the stiff breeze, Lions come away with a draw. Achtung, Milbal. Huge welcome on the show now to show regular Graham Payne. Welcome, Graham. Cheers, Nick. Thanks for having me on. Points lost for you today, mate? Or a point gain. How do you see that one all draw with West Bromwich Albion? How, how, how does it feel at the end of the Yeah, end I of feel the two points lost for me. We had the chances yeah. to to put it, you know, to put the game out of sight, really. And uh, we didn't, you know, obviously over Femi's at 1-0. And then there was a couple at the start of the second half. And what more one when he leaned back and put it over the bar, you know? Um, mm, I think Fleming and, had and, a shot in the second half as well. That was like yeah. a point after touchdown, I called it. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, up in the, up in the high gods of the CBO, and funny old game because I, I th it, it's I thought it was a game of almost it sums up Neil Harris's management, the good and the bad, if you if you like, because yeah. you know I, I think it's easy to forget that West Bromwich Albion still top six side, they were they were decent outfit Graham, and we made them look second third best, not even second best, they were third best in the first half. We're talking about missed chances, and you're right. We should have should have been a couple ahead. I think Harris said that in his post match conference. Yeah. But then second half, we we kind of let them back into the game a little bit. They made substitutions, and we don't really change our approach. Um, and that comes mm. back to Neil Harris. I think, you know, the good and the bad, all in one, all in one one match. In that sense, I said before the game, he's got a go to side that he picks for home games. What more comes back in? Mm. And that's that's the team, but you could tell second half 
he needed to change it. There were some guys struggling. I think in the end, Watmore basically told him that he needed to come off. He was mm. signaling, you know, yeah. over our side of the ground. I saw that. that. Take, take me out, yeah. yeah. Take me out, you know. And I just think he was a bit... Well, he was very late with the substitutions and um, I think they should have been earlier. But, yeah, I mean, they knocked the ball around, but I've got to ask the question again. I, I can't recall Sarkic having to make a save in the whole game, really. No, no. I mean, just to go back to the first half, we were very, very yeah. strong. It was a nice goal. I, I really liked that. I mean, what more was, was selected in the side today um, amidst a lot of comment online about, um, you know, and there's a debate about Casper de Noor and, and him not playing. But let's let's talk about what more, because a lot of people weren't all that happy with with him starting and the same with the, the Mitchell and Savile, um, you know, defensive midfield roles. But... That was a really nicely taken goal by Watmore. Um, fed it through the middle, found him in space, and he put it away with a plum. And 1 0. Um, you know, you can't argue with that, can you? I thought it was a really nice finish, Graham. No. He took it well, yeah. I think today was one of his better games. He, he, he blows very hot and cold. Uh, he does. Yes. And today was one of his better games, and he he, t- he took the goal very well. Yeah, um, you're right about hot and cold. I think maybe you know that's that's why he's a he's a Harris player really because um, the first half I thought we were blowing very very hot and we were looking good. There's the other chances, the Oberfemi chance, and that was a ball down the middle if if memory serves. I've not seen yeah. the back at all. Um, Leonard, and he really really should, Leonard. Leonard, he really should have done better. Um, we finished the half, and there's a late flurry by West Brom, but I thought we should have been deservedly, well, one nil ahead, but we should have been a couple more. And I think sometimes the, the, the failure to take those chances, which has bedeviled us, Graham, is it comes back to haunt us in the second half, mate, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been a, uh, an ongoing issue well, for a while, hasn't it? To not taking our chances and then getting hit, you know, by the opposition. But yeah, there was talk also, Nick, I don't know if you saw it, about a penalty in the first half? I can't... There was yeah, a, there was um, a handball. Oh, God. Yeah, there was a handball, a ball in from the right side, and it struck the West Brom defender's hand. I mean, yeah. in, in real time, and I'm, I'm thinking back now, as I said already, listeners, you, by the time you hear this, you'll probably see some of the replay, so it might not look as clear as, um, as I'm describing it. Uh, and I'm an unbiased voice, Graham. I think you'll agree. I'm, I'm, I'm like a judge. I'm, 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 you know, <laughs> but it seemed to strike the um, the defender's hand. I suppose you, the argument there would be it was coming at a pace where he couldn't get out of the way of it. But it was, I thought, it was a penalty in real time, mm. um, not given. Um, and there was a couple of other moments where um, the referee seemed to let a lot go, and it wasn't in our favour a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, there we are, one 0 at half time. But you. And there was a chance at the start, we've mentioned already, I think Fleming had a shot that was over the bar by some distance and there were other moments. He could have, um, that shot, he could have played Watmore through there because he was he was on the left of him. And I yeah. think Watmore was not, not best pleased when he did, you know, he went for the shot. But as you say, ended up, I think he ended up in the upper tier of the cold blow lane. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, high. It was high. They made, um, I mean, Jed Wallace was anonymous listeners. I, yeah. I thought he made no impact, Graham. I didn't see anything. No. Not even any any of the um, you know the petulance we saw last time when he came down with West Brom, he seemed mm. to be drained almost. He, I, I don't know whether he was trying not to get involved when when that side of it, and as a consequence, you didn't see any of the Jed that we once knew and once loved. Um, he yeah, was, he's he was not anonymous, wasn't it? I mean, I, I, I couldn't work out what position he was playing. He he, he sort of floated around and. But um, you know he did nothing, did he? Really, I can't. I can't think. No, of no, no. I think it was an half chance shot in the first half that I think could yeah, have been blocked. They had a that. little flurry at the end of the first half, cut the corners. But there was, yeah. I mean, from the from the Wallace perspective, there was nothing. Um, they yeah. hooked him in the second half, and yeah. in fairness, once their subs came in, I thought they started to look a little bit more purposeful. They passed the ball well, and they but they pressed with a little bit more intent on us and. Um, Without creating any chances, though, just to repeat your no. point, Grim. Nothing, nothing cut and dried. Sarkic wasn't really called into action, mate. Was I think there was one, no. one shot on target, which I think Sarkic kind of knocked down and, and collected reasonably easily, but it wasn't a dangerous shot. Um, and I thought we were in the driving seat up until up until um, <laughs> the, the the rather soft penalty. Um, 
I mean, I thought it was a penalty, if I'm yeah. honest. Um, but it was a silly penalty as well because um, the guy was clearly inside the line and um, Joe Bryan kind of caught his foot away from him almost. So I, I can't really argue with the decision, but it just seems such a soft, soft goal to give away. Yeah, it was. And as you know, I think you've already mentioned that the, obviously the Fleming one, but I think there was a chance for Watmore that was even better where the ball came across and he, he, he leant back and he pushed, put it over the bar. Yeah. You know, we just couldn't get that second goal. I think the second goal, I think the game's done. I, I can't see them coming back from 2 0 down. But no, yeah, it, no. It, I think it was a penalty. He tripped, I think he tripped the guy, you know, unfortunately. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, I can't. I, can't, I you know I've not seen any of it uh, as I've said a couple of times, listeners. But I, I can't in real time. I don't think I could really dispute the penalty. Um, and thereafter, the game was in the balance. But it, it somehow, I mean, West Brom didn't really carve out any clear cut chances that I can remember as we speak in the evening after the game. Um, neither did we particularly. It was it was it was a bit of hustle and bustle really. But I suppose I'm caught between two two stools really, Graham. On the one hand. And I think I posted it, you know, if you'd have offered me a point at the start of the game, I probably would have taken yeah. that. I think I did say, um, I, I haven't edited any of the stuff I did earlier on, but I think I said the point probably is a good result for us today. Um, it's just having led, having gone in front and having done so well to, to give it away, which is, um, you know, which is the thing. It, it just seems a bit like, you know, points lost. It, it, it takes the fizz out of you. Have you have your drink almost, isn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, I to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the same as you. Before the game, I'd have, I'd have taken a point, given where they were in the league, the run they'd been on. You know, I, I would have taken a point. And, I, and but to get, I think, yeah, I, I, as I said to you at the start, I think to me at the end of the day, I think it's two points dropped. You know, we could have, we should have, could, could have, yeah. should have got three points. Yeah. But, I mean, I've been having this you know, internal internal debate with myself as to where safety lies. It's 39 games. I'm just looking at the league table. Um, we're on 44 points with that. That may, may prove to be a valuable point, listeners, despite all the um, points that we're making tonight, Graham. But, so we're 16th in the 44, 44 points. Um, Huddersfield, 39 points in that third relegation spot with, with Birmingham. I mean, I would sooner be in their position than in their position. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. I don't think we can quite say safety is within, within reach, but it's it's getting there. I mean, a win at Rotherham on Monday, which is what we've got to go to um, to Yorkshire to, to, to get, I believe, without no pressure. Um, mm -hmm. But, that you know, it starts to... It starts to get, a win on uh, Rotherham, I think... Will secure it for us. Is that too too bold a talk for you, Graham? Um, yeah, I, yeah. I think one more win and maybe a, a draw. But I mean, yeah. four more points. I think you know. But I mean, the next two games it's Rotherham away and then Huddersfield. Huddersfield away, so. next Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I mean, a win a win from one of those two games takes us to yeah. forty seven. And as you say, a win or a point, um, and we're getting towards the high forties, and that's probably salvation for the club but you know certainly coming into view now so still work to be done 39 games to go just uh so that's uh, seven games to go um so it's quite an achievement and i, I think I, I was just reading a debate on 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 twitter before I, I, I let you go graham about the future of neil harris because on the one hand we've achieved something you know the ch a strong chance of safety I, I, I keep catching my, my um phrasing late listeners like we've achieved it we're not there yet so uh, but it's certainly looking a much uh, brighter prospect so presuming that we go on and indeed survive in the championship ground i'd say that's a brilliant achievement by neil harris presuming he gets there so let's put that caveat in um it's whether he's there's a debate as to whether he's got a long-term future at the club and i i, I must admit um I think he's, he's earned the right to carry on into next season if he if he does pull off this um, escape act. How do you how do you see it? Or, or, are you are you for I, are you for changing dropping the pilot as they say? <laughs> I I made my feelings cl no clear when he came back. I, I didn't think you know to the end of the season. Yes, but going forward, no. Um, mm. I just. I don't know. I, I keep coming back with the, the, the feeling that the way he sets out the team now, whether it's been, 
and I'll, you know, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Whether he's setting it up like this because we're in a relegation battle and we're battling for everything, I just yeah. don't think this style of football is sustainable in the championship. You know, you, you, they, the, the players, to me, are starting to look tired towards the end of games now. You know, when they're going at it, you know, constantly yeah. for 90 minutes. They're not, you know, it's it's constant, isn't it? You know, they're, it's they're high energy. The yeah, high energy. That's the High right energy. Word, yeah. Um, it's it, it's what I call high energy. Well, same thing in a sense, cup tie football, because you know you're you're pumped up to the max, and you're waiting for um, you know errors and mistakes so you can fall. So it's it, it's it's one hundred miles an hour football. I I kind of like it. You know, it's yeah. it feels it feels like Millwall again down there. So you know, I can't. Um, and that's it's been a while. If, as we've said a few times on these shows, listeners, I think it's been a while since we've all been able to say that. It certainly feels like we're back at Millwall again, Graham. So you know, but I, I accept the I accept the criticism if if you want to put it that way that over a forty six game season in this Championship division, yeah. um, it's probably not sustainable. I, I, I was saying, talking to myself earlier on, as I do up in Birdshit Corner, um, <laughs> aptly named today, <laughs> listeners, aptly named. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't dwell on that. Um, but I was watching a clip, and it was the it was an England versus Republic of Ireland game from the early nineties when Jack Charlton first took over, and yeah. someone put it on um, this clip on on Twitter, and it was basically England under pressure for, uh, for about three or four minutes from the Republic in the the old Jack Charlton era, where the ball was essentially pumped into the England area, and we just couldn't get the ball out of our out of our half effectively, so it kept coming back, coming back, coming back, and. It, it does look like football from a very different era because one of the re replies, and I think this would be a criticism of the Neil Harris style, which is in effect that, that kind of direct approach, um, is that you know a, a couple of defenders with possession and the ability to make a few paces and pass the ball and keep you know take the sting out of the game would have dealt with that, which England at that point didn't have. So that was the the, the advance of football to 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 deal with direct football, if you like. And I can see how the at the moment we've still got a bit of a novelty value with Neil Harris. Here we're, we're going 100 miles now against the team like West Brom, passing side. But you probably can't do that for 46 games, and it probably will catch no. you out in the end. I think that's the problem with it. It came to a natural end in his first reign. I felt you know he'd gone mm. as far as he could. Yeah. And I don't know. Um, you know I can't. If you're right, if he keeps us up, then I, I think he's gonna he's gonna stay because he's earned that that that, that opportunity because he's kept us up. He signed an eighteen month um, contract. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I just feel if he does stay, then he's got he's got to bring in some fresh people on the coaching staff. I, I didn't agree with Dave Livermore coming back. You know, no. maybe temp like to the end of the season, but. You know, I'd like, I know you. I think he's been in the news a bit. I'd love to have seen Stephen Reid come back mm. with him. Mm. You know, mm. more of an attacking player. But you know, I, I, it's going to be an interesting summer. I would say that because you've got, you know, the, obviously all the loan players go back. There's five or six out of contract. How many of them are going to get new deals? So it, whoever comes, if Harris is, stays or doesn't, there, there's going to be a major rebuild in the summer because yeah, the squad's yeah. going to be. You know, down in numbers again, as it appears to happen. Well, con you know, quite regularly now in, the, in 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 the summer, where we we send loan players back and his players out of contract. You know, but I think that's football where it is now. But I agree. I mean, I, I think the club will have a major decision to take um, if because it's not yet. Well, no. We haven't yet done it. If we if we achieve safety, and it's looking a lot closer now, a couple of wins will probably do it between now and the end of the season. Um, but we do have a decision to make. I, I think it'll, Neil Harris remaining in place will be a strong pull. I don't. I, I can't see the club wielding the axe if he wants to continue, um, which we don't no. know. I'm going to guess he does, I presume. Um, but I, I think you're right, Graham, about the need for a new approach. Because, I mean, as we've said already, we're talking about today's game, and I, I do accept that resources are very limited at the moment. We don't have much to play with in attacking an attacking sense and um you know but neil harris clearly favors what you might call the workhorse type of player um i was yeah. just reading casper de obviously didn't feature today um has been a good player for us good passing player 
and he doesn't seem to feature in um, in, in the Neil Harris um, range. What I called the talent, the Roman essays. You know, the Brook Norton Cuffey was was uh, dropped today in favour of, of Duncan Montmore, didn't see Brook. But players like that don't seem to be as natural a choice for Neil as as, um, as the workhorses. Now, whether that's going to continue once safety is achieved, or if when safety is achieved, I don't know. It's a big, it's a big kind of crossroads that we're coming to in the summertime. We're not very good with crossroads, Neil, are we? We're not very good. No, with big we're decisions. not. <laughs> 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 we're talking about kind of philosophical directions here and what kind of club do we want to be and I'm not sure we've ever we tried to do that with Joe Edwards um, albeit at the wrong time um, and now we've gone back to basics with the return of Neil um, so you know but we're going to have to face it at some stage or well, maybe Neil's going to have to learn a new new tune on his, on his guitar or something I don't know because um I think he will need to adapt because the championship is a is a, a different level to um, you know where he's been. I think you need more than workhorses in the championship to be you know sustainable. Yeah. And the people like to get Denor and Norton Cuffey got two minutes today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, all, all but nothing, you know. It's, 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 yeah. Uh, in a game where we, we probably could have pressed on and won it, and I think that's that's the thing, and I think that's maybe where some of the criticisms will will dwell. But as it is um, a valuable point, I think probably we'll leave yeah. it there. Who was your man of the match, Graham? Before I let you go, who, who would you select? I know who I, I went for in the end, but who did you go for? Um, I, 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 I said it was one of Watmore's better games, but I think I'd have to. I know he's, he wins it. It's Ryan Leonard again. I thought he was excellent. Mm. Yeah, he didn't so. give them. A sniff down that right hand side at all. Whoever, no. I think they've tried about three different players up against him, and no one got anywhere with him. With him, so yeah. Given that Ryan he's, Leonard, he's, you know, he's 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 a midfielder really. He's playing in, the, in yeah. an offensive role because he's being asked to. But um, his his main role is a midfielder. But no, I'd have to agree with that. I, I thought Jules Honeyman in the first half, and uh, someone that had a. a, a, a Go back at me for not selecting Ryan Leonard in the first half. Uh, I mean, you can't win. I mean, George Savile. I, I, I wouldn't argue with George Savile. I thought he did well today, but you, you can't always um, please all the people all the time, listeners. As, as as someone said, there we are. On to on to Rotherham on on Monday. Do you fancy us there, Graham? How, how do you see the? I mean, sort of going. We, we we have to be thinking about winning, in my opinion. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean. They're, they're, you know, 25 dusty, losses. Though. I'm just looking at their league table. Three it's, wins all it's, season, 25 losses. You know we're going to get beat. We know yeah, we're going to get beat. Man, it's, it's <laughs> rough. You know what's going to be. I'm sorry. If it's happened too many times over the years. You've been going yeah, down Millwall you know. for too long, Painey. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't no, call it. Yeah. Man. All joking aside, you've got a fancy just to get a win there, haven't you, really? You know. Scored 30 goals, listeners. They've conceded eight. They've got a minus 50 goal difference. <laughs> they just won just three times. You just know how this is going to finish. But anyway, <laughs> there we are. Graham, I'm going to let you get on, mate. Big thank you, Graham, for joining us tonight, mate. I really appreciate it. Cheers, Nick. Enjoyed it. Thanks, mate. Good afternoon, Nick. Oh, Bobby, T you know, I don't know where to start. My birthday celebration's tomorrow. Yeah, we played well. I still think we fucking got robbed, but on the TV now, they're saying it was a penalty. But shit, uh, Abby used to everyone. I'm fucking fuming, man. Take our fucking chances, man. I mean, Jed Wallace, all that money, you fucking money grabbing. Oh, I'm not going to swear now on here, mate. Need to calm down, mate. But yeah, Nick, Nick Hart, Bobby T here, 1-1, one, one. should have won it really, take our chances, Obafembi, Ginger Nut Watmore, you know, they done nothing in the game, and it, I'm really upset, I mean, yeah, we played well, I would have took a point before the game, De definitely, but the way, they, they done nothing, Nick, and the old Lions, so yeah, I'm not saying two points dropped, but we didn't take our chances, man of the match travel, I don't know about that, man, I mean, he had Jed in his pocket, but what I'm trying to basically say to you is, um, yeah, let's hope Coventry win now and Birmingham QPR. But, I mean, in the whole of the game play, yeah, I mean, Joe Bryan, I mean, everyone fought to it. Everyone fought like lions. But we should have really won it, mate. Take our chances at Obafembi and that lot. So now, rather than Huddersfield now, it's down to us now. So now on hands, win games and we'll stay up, mate. But today, 
Uh, I mean, we really tried hard. We turned up. We got a good meal fight, but should have won the game. Bobby T signing off. I'm fucking fuming. Happy Easter. Millwall. Bye for now. Oh, yeah. One more thing he And, I mean, other Femi can't do it on his own. Long one's not good enough. Billy Mitchell. I don't know how long is the nor. The nor gets five minutes. How long is the nor? An essay. Uh, it's just a joke, mate. I mean, not even essay. The nor and Cuffy coming on. The nor. Billy Mitchell, mate. Love him, man. But anyway, what I'm trying to say to you is now is the big one is. We are going to stay up. One more thing, Bobby T here. One more time. Um, we fucking need a striker in the summer. We need a big lump uh, striker. Abafembi, Bradshaw's not, not the mustard cut. We need a striker. And on that note, happy Easter, my Moor boys. Take care. Bobby T signing off. No one likes us, but we don't care. So, hello, dear listeners. Harry Warren here, back after the 1 1 draw against West Brom. Um, I really enjoyed that, barring the result. Um, I thought we were good without being, you know, well beaters. I thought we were we were our dogged selves. I thought we were back to back to basics again. Um but that being said, we opened West Brom up more than enough times, maybe three or four times in the first half, or two and three times in the second half before they got their penalty, which I'll come on to. But yeah, I thought I thought we were good again. Um, Watmore took his goal really well from a lovely outside of the boot pass from Leonard, who again just looks almost our best player, um, arguably our best player player of the season for me. Um, if he can just stay fit for the next six games, seven games, whatever it is, um, you know that'll be key. Um, I think, you know, not taking anything away. Oberfemi's got to score one of his two chances. I think the first one, he's tried to be too clever with it. Um, and the second one in the second half is the other side of the other side of the ground almost for me. But I, I feel like he should should get a shot off and get it away and, and probably work the keeper. Um, Watmore's first goal is a very clever finish. Um, but yeah, we looked, we looked good. We looked dogged. We defended really well. We've not let them have any chances. I think they have one chance after the goal that Sarkis has had to save from. We took it two ends. Um, you know, where we've had six or seven chances. If you had, if you had said to me that West Brom were in the relegation zone and we were chasing, chasing the playoffs, I, I'd have probably not. Not argue with that, um, and I think that's a big, big credit to how we're playing at the minute. You know, I know we didn't win, um, but we deserve to. Um, probably time for one of the ones where we've probably not deserved nothing more than a draw to go against us. But the way it went against us is just indicative of the poor officiating in the English football league at the moment. Um, I thought the referee was very erratic. Fouls that were, you know. There was more hefty challenges from us on them and them on us um, outside the box that were not given. And then that's given. And to me, that's 10, 15 yards away from me, down on the right-hand side in front of the away end. And I, I don't think it's ever a penalty. You know, it's as soft as fuck. If there is any contact, it's minimal. He's looking for it. You've got to do more for me to get a penalty. But there we go. The referee gives a penalty and they score. Um, if you'd offered me a point before the game, I'd have taken it, but realistically, we we should have won that game. Um, but what a fucking turnaround that's been that we're now saying that we should beat teams like that. If we go to Rotherham, um, you know the way the results have gone, three big points at Rotherham, and you know, you know, it starts to look slightly more in our own hands, which it is anyway, but very much our own hands. A lot of the teams down the bottom have got to play each other. I'm currently watching the last two minutes of. Blackburn fucking absolutely batter Ipswich, but are losing 1-0. Um, so let's hope that can continue. Um, but yeah, we, uh, you know, we, we're, we're not out the fight yet, but we're getting closer and closer every game. We're picking up points. We're not getting beat. And if we do get beat, we're hard to beat. Teams have to work to beat us. So, you know, we've created more chances today, which I, I think was a lot of people's, um, what's the right word? A lot of people's um, criticism. 
of, of the team. Um, and I think, you know, all in all, it's a good point. It's a point that maybe other teams wouldn't have expected us to get. Um, it should have been all three. Um, and we go to Rotherham, and if we get all three at Rotherham, it looks somewhat of a better point. Um, but there we go. Anyway, come on, your Lions, on to Easter Monday. Hello, Nick. Bill Slack out in the park this morning, walking my uh, my retired greyhounds. I've got Glow, Deal, and then I've got Jimmy. Now, Jimmy, um, I'd probably describe as um, an average racing greyhound, um, but what he lacked in natural ability, he made up for um, by working really hard and giving 100%. So I'll let your listeners guess what ex Millwall player he's named after. Um, I mean, I, I, I quite enjoyed yesterday. I, I have to say that the first 10 minutes, I was probably uh, anti Neil Harris, the ball going out of, out of play quite a lot. Um, Sarkic ki- kicking was, well, I don't think we can describe it as kicking, can we? I think he thought he was playing rugby at one point and just kicking it into touch. Um, not at one point in the entire game. So that was really disappointing. Um, all of that being said, um, I'll talk about that, that the last part of the second half in a minute. Um, you look at the, the resources and the players that are available to, to West Brom. You look at the, you know, what, what we saw with West Brom um, is accomplished Edwards ball. Um, play the ball out the back. All of that modern stuff that I cannot fucking stand. Um, and they come down with multi, multi million pound squad playing this new way that apparently is, is the fashion these days. And who had all the clear cut chances? Who had, who had most of the game? We didn't have most of the ball, but in true Millwall fashion, we had most of the chances. Um, and there's part of me now that, that, that is quite enjoying watching little old Millwall with absolutely no resources. Um, certainly in comparison to a lot of these teams, um, just letting them have the fucking ball. That, you, know, you know, split the lines, do, do, do what you want. But when, it, when push comes to shove, we're going to have a couple of players on you not letting you do that. That being said, so I'm pleased with a point. I think like most of us, I said to me dad and me boy when we come out, um, we said we'd take a point out of today um, at the start of the game, so we can't moan too much. I think, last couple of things from me, give me Danny Mack at left back um, all of the time against Joe Bryan. <coughs> Joe Bryan has a howler in him. He picked up an early early booking. He's on a little bit of a, a, a tight rope. The penalty was, it was such a fucking gift. It was such a gift. He, he, wrapped, he, wrapped, he wrapped up that equaliser and put a bow on top of it and, and handed it to him. And that was incredibly disappointing. And what you also have with Brian, he gets he gets caught forward, fine, you want your full backs to push up, um, but jogs back, he, he, he takes his time getting back, um, and, and I've seen this for most of the season now when he's fit, so give me Danny Mack any time, just, just, just give me a fucking full back in there, um, this, this, it's just got more energy, um, we're, we're, we're having that debate again aren't we, you know, do, do you want a footballer or, or do you want someone who's, who's going to who's going to defend in, in, in the way that we want Millwall players to defend. The last 20 minutes of that game genuinely disappointed me. I still thought that we could go for the win. I do think it's a little bit un millwall like to, um, to sit back and, and hang on to, to what you've got. Um, but again, Neil Harris has come back. I don't want to say that, that we're definitely up now, but there's an awful, awful lot more teams now that should be more worried than us. So... I was disappointed. Um, what the fuck Watmore was still doing on the pitch that late in the game, I don't know. He should have come off after an hour. Um, you know, I think there's a little bit about the way he runs. He looks knackered in the first five minutes. But he was fucked. Um, when Longman come on, he was actually walking over to be taken off. He wanted to be taken off because he was so knackered. Um, the activity off the bench in the last 20 minutes was really disappointing. Um, I, I think we could have twisted ever so slightly more, but it looks very much like we're going to stay in this division this year now. Um, three points on Monday, and, and I, I think we can pretty much say we're going to be all right. Um, 
Row it's going to take Birmingham down. Um, I don't know if I find that funny or not. I mean, you know, funny old game football, mate, innit? I'll speak to you soon. Take care, mate. Ta-da. Evening, Nick. Evening, listeners. John Rankin just calling in after the West Bromwich Albion draw 1-1 at the Den. We made our pilgrimage to the home of football today. Um, the wrong way up the A2 because we live down on the south coast. And I've got to say... The pilgrimage was well worth the uh, the effort. I thought Millwall played very, very well indeed. First off, I was very impressed with the back four. Um, I was watching Jaffet Tanganga, and he plays very deep, and he does the simple things um, that a defender should do. And it was Johan Cruyff, the great football philosopher, who said, football is a simple game, but it's the hardest thing in the world to play it simply. And he does. He does nice, simple things and he executes them really well. And the main thing about him is his awareness of where he should be. I was watching him and he's constantly looking around. He knows where he should be, positions his body really well. And he's always there to clear up, to make a tackle, to make a header and do those traditional defensive things. And I'm so pleased that we've got, you know, a reasonably good back four. Joe Bryan played well. Uh, Cooper played well, and Ryan Leonard uh, obviously played well at at right back. In front of the back four, we had Saville and um, and Billy, and I think that's a very, very good kind of uh, back six, if you like. Um, And the rest of the team played really well, and, and, you know, Watmore's goal, it came from an error, but he took it well, and I thought we were all over West Brom. We defended our box well. Uh, Joe Bryan kept um, uh, the the West Brom lad number 11, uh, Dean Ganger, is it? Um, very quiet, you know, and um, I thought we were looking very good. It was such a shame in the second half that we gave away that weak penalty. Uh, again, it was down the other end and I think Bryan just sort of, you know, got turned inside out and he left a leg, a trailing foot and the guy went over it. But what did annoy me was the very, very poor officiating. At one point, I think the referee just lost control. He didn't know what decisions to make. He was looking at his linesman and his linesman was looking at him, you know, and sort of scratching their heads. Um, What do we do for a throw on? Was it a corner? You know, was it two? Was it a penalty? I just think it was appalling officiating. Um, I think the referee was determined not to give us anything. We had a stonewall penalty. In a second half, I think it was Obafemi or what more, just got completely taken out. Um, a much clearer penalty than the one that we gave away ourselves. There were two, three standout chances actually. The first half, Obafemi was through, clear on goal, should have buried it. And in the second half, Duncan Watmore, um, again in front of goal, should have just kept the ball down and put it into the corner. Um, but you know, what can you say? I really do feel that we we dropped two points there, which is a fantastic thing, really. I mean, West Brom are a very good team. They've got fantastic players who are all fitting at the top of their game. And, you know, and and we handled them really, really well. So we go on to Rotherham next week. Let's hope we can keep up the, um, the intensity and the commitment and the work rate, and we should be okay. My man in a match, I know, I know, uh, um, Sav was chosen as uh, George Savile was chosen as man of the match, but I'm going to give my man of the match to Duncan Watmore because he's coming for a lot of stick, and I thought he was really really good today. Running him a close second was George Honeyman, um, who I think is becoming one of our most consistent performers, you know, in a Millwall shirt, and I've always thought he was a very very good player. So I'm very pleased with the way we performed. I'm disappointed we dropped two points, but that is a much better. Mill wall type performance built on a very, very solid platform at the back. And I think if we can just carry on as we are, we are out of trouble for relegation, hopefully. And then we've got to have a decent summer window, transfer window, and we've got to rebuild for next season. But at the moment, one step at a time, come on, you Lions. Hi, Nick. Matt Webb here, just uh, giving you my two p- penneth worth on yesterday's draw against. West Brom. Um, hindsight's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Uh, 
So I said to you, we would have got a point against West Brom yesterday, uh, before the game. I think most of us would have bitten a, your left arm off for that one, mate, to be fair. But, uh, lo and behold, West Brom did not exactly turn up yesterday, especially with, with where they are in the league, uh, challenging for a top six spot. They look really average, um, to say the least. A lot of positives to go through from yesterday, mate. Um, very, very much a lot of positives. I felt, um, as I say, the aggression of the team, the, the, how we came out of the traps nice and quick and good, was really, um, really good. I felt Georgie Savile, basically man marking Jed Wallace throughout the whole entire game, well, until Jed got uh, taken off, um, was, a, a, was a bit of a masterclass, really, from uh, Neil Harris. Uh, because obviously you know the talent that man possesses um, so much so that you know that wasn't a Jed Wallace like performance yesterday uh, so take your hat off to Georgie Savile on that one in my opinion uh, special mentions also go to Ryan Leonard I thought we worked his absolute socks off and to be fair I would have given him my man of the match uh, uh, vote to uh, Leonard um, but you know nothing taken away from uh, Savile um, <laughs> special mention of Duncan Watmore. I think, you know, we played to his strengths yesterday. Where, I'm, I'll, I'll put the tweet out at half time saying, you know, stop doing these crosses into Obafemi because West Brom had three six foot two plus defenders and they're winning everything. Not, and they're also the goalkeeper as well, which, you know, make that four people against one five foot six five foot seven striker who arguably had a really again another industrious game yesterday for michael obafemi I, i'm going to take my hat off to him again yesterday he's, he's just looking better and better every time i see him play but the moment we stopped crossing the balls in and we actually fed the balls through the middle we were doing them for pace like no tomorrow and lo and behold what more scores a goal from from a, a ball through the middle which all right we had a stroke of luck for it with a bit of defensive frailties but got to still put them away and do you know what i'm going to take my hat off to him yesterday and i think he done really well uh, so you know all in all you know a point was deserved but it was two points dropped and that's when it comes to the negatives and again i'm a bit concerned as a negative in terms of the time of the subs now unless Neil is trying to sort of like, he's going to ring the changes on Monday against Robin, which most people hope will happen, but I can't see it happening personally because Neil does have his go-to people, his so-called favourites. I, I really can't see it. So these boys are probably going to put in another, could put in another 60, 70 minute shift on Monday when they just put in, majority of them putting in a full 90 minute shift yesterday. So we are really challenging their fitness levels, um, so to speak. And I don't want that to come and bite, bite, that, bite us on the arse on, on that situation. So unless he's got an idea of freshening it up, which I really hope he does, because I think you know some of those players do need a bit of a breather and there's some players on the bench that are chomping at the bit to get on. Um, I'm gonna have to give a negative to Joe Bryan. I, I've said it again in, in previous uh, episodes where I just don't see him defending. He's not a left back. And again, very clumsy defending cost us two points. You know, that was, it, it doesn't matter if people think, oh, he died or, or, or it was a slight nick. At the end of the day, he's put his leg out. The, 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 the attacker seen it. He's gone down. Refs give Penno. And you could just tell by Joe Bryan not appealing or not arguing, or even the players not appealing or arguing that it was a pen. So, I just think this is another game that he's cost us vital points. Um, and, all right, I feel sorry for him that he's gone off injured, but how he's, he's come from a team that attack majority, i.e. Fulham, and very little defending. And, again, it, it, again, it's proved his point that yesterday he can't defend, and he has cost us the game yesterday, more, in, in all fairness. But... Again, we haven't lost, so let's try and turn that negative into a positive. So, you know, Monday comes for Rotherham, and, you know, we could send them down. 
which is, I hate these sort of games personally, because they're gonna be fighting two for now to try and get a result on Monday uh, to stay in the league. So, yeah, I really, really do hate these, these games, but, you know, I'll take a one nil away win, and I think, personally, if we get three points on Monday, we are safe. Oh well, uh, roll on Monday, and uh, have a lovely Easter, everyone. Come on, you lines. Right, Nick, calling after Mill 1, West Brom 1. Um... Yeah, a very uh, very encouraging performance again. I, I, I feel I feel like every game at the moment we're we're showing our we we'll sort of like our nerve, but we kind of we look a lot more co- cohesive. And I think today was probably our best home performance after Norwich um, in terms of like fluidity, off the ball work, organisation. At no point today did we look like conceding, and it's it's very disappointing that. The way we did concede was uh, one of our more experienced, better players, Joe Bryan, at least on paper, giving away a needless penalty um, in, the, in the corner of the box uh, where there, there wasn't any immediate danger. I think he took out a standing leg. Should have had our own penalty, I think, maybe after what more was found, but, you know, um, it's, it's, it's fine margins, I guess. Um, yeah, so we, we in the midst of that, that bourbon... Uh, restoration, you know, like there's been the revolution. Uh, you know, the uh, the oppressed classes have had their say, and now we're we're back to business as usual. Hoping, uh, hoping things will carry on. You know, like maybe you need a bit of order in the midst of chaos, and uh, I think uh, I think that order is what we need right now. You know, you know, chop some heads maybe. Um, you know, I think we've come we've come quite a ways. Um, in the past few months, well, past month or so, six weeks, um, to the point where I can walk away from that thinking that I'm disappointed. But yeah, it's, it's it's a good point against a, a good side, um, and convinced we can replicate it against against other sides. Um, I think it's the clearest indication, even though we didn't win today, um, that I think we'll be fine, um, which puts us in a us in a weird position, but I think it also puts Neil Harris in a weird position because, you know, uh, we'll probably be safe now. And where does that leave him in the summer? Well, he, he's definitely got a job, but uh, the real the real test of his metal comes in the summer months. Can he rebuild? Can he can he make it a long term project? Who knows? Um, I'm doubtful, um, uh, but I'll back him all the way. He's, he's my childhood hero after all. Uh, I want to give mentions in, in dispatches to uh, uh, George Honeyman, who I thought was just exceptional today. And I, I don't really understand how Savile got the man of the match. Um, I felt like Honeyman was Honeyman was everywhere. Um, again, playing in a, in a position that's unnatural to him, but he really does look like the player that we thought we had when we signed him. Um, I prefer me, good and bad. Uh, the good is he loves to put himself about. He looks a threat. Maybe it's not the natural finisher that we need. Um, but yeah, you know, um, can't complain. And it's it's weird. It's weird giving a voice message where uh, where I'm not worried. Uh, it feels like we're kind of veering towards mid table safety. Um, cue, a, cue a loss at Rotherham, who, who were conference north worthy in terms of performances and results recently. But uh, hopefully we can buck that trend. All right, Nick. Cheers, mate. Take care. Uh, good afternoon, Nick. Um, not sure if I've caught this. I'm not sure if I've caught this in time for the uh, West Brom show, but I'm um, just calling in with my thoughts of yesterday. I well learned, but yeah, disappointing draw. Um, I thought we actually played quite well yesterday. West Brom, a team in fifth, made them look quite ordinary. To be fair, yeah, they had a bit of yes, they had passing, but we actually defended quite well. Um, again, the lack of a clinical striker lets us down at the uh, critical moment. But I can't blame Oberfemi for doing that. He actually he actually played really well yesterday. Um, I think they all played well yesterday. Joe Bryan, apart from his silly mistake, played well. Um, did well after the uh, booking after five minutes. Actually gave in and put in some crunching tackles, which was different. 
but still points a point could have been three but on to Rotherham on Monday come on you Lions Afton Millwall